All right, good evening, guys. Ken at Tortoise Capital. This is the review of the weekend trading report for uh, August 14th, 2020. Um, it's for the week 16 through 16 through 20. So this is for next week. Um, the uh, registration link there uh, is posted in Patreon. That's just a, a reposting of the registration link for the Saturday morning Q&A sessions. That starts at 10 central um, and uh, I, I will post the uh, recording of that one along with this one tonight on the usual page on Patreon for you. Uh, but you can get that, you can get that on the Patreon page as well. Um, okay. All right, let's just go ahead and get started. So this week started off with a bang. Um, we had a continuation of last week's gains uh, with a cup with a upward move, sharp sell off, a sharp recovery, and then wondering, man, is this going to really challenge for higher, or is it going to reject it one more time and run back to the Bollinger Band mean? So instead, we got uh, we got two quiet days in a row. And um, finished the week meekly, so that was really the issue for me. It was uh, was this going to run north big, run south big, and all we got was just uh, the two, you know, two of the three smallest range days of the last ten, with no real net change in price action. So um, market, I think, digesting what it means for Kamala Harris, the fact that it did not sell off sharply, uh, I take to be a positive sign for the market. I'll reserve my judgment on what it means for the nation. <laughs> That's not what you're paying me for. So a review of the 10 days. Um, First time in a while, we haven't made a new 10-day and 30-day high, so in, uh, a very quiet day in all regards. Didn't really threaten the downside much here either. It only went a fraction lower than yesterday's low and still held above the Dragon completely and the RL90. Uh, so that's a favorable thing. It's basically the last 10 days, except for dipping the toes in the water right there. That has stayed out of the dragon, north of the dragon between Z1 and Z2 all 10 days. And so today I would treat as a willingness to hold those gains from this week for a continuation for next week. Um, so the 10 day look back and the 10 day range here is 3.24% uh, from top to bottom, which is a little under three ATR for a 10 day period. So, but volatility continues to decline. At the same time, price is marching upward. The, uh, the 10 day low um, was made 10 days ago. And so when that drops off, um, the t it was uh, reinforced here. So on Monday, that'll be the 10 day low. But starting Tuesday, that 10-day low is going to move all the way up here to 331 uh, and be there for a while. So um, there's a range compression sense of urgency coming along here for a, uh, for a move. Um, say hi was made uh, three days ago, reinforced yesterday as well, right on the Z2 line. Um, the 10 period regression line uh, has been a solid, basically a 45 degree angle up, you know, from dot to dot and closed strongly above the dragon. Um, you'll see that even though the last three days that has started, that moving RL10 has rolled over, it still finished a fraction above the baby dragon. So there's a nice 
momentary pause right in here at that 337.76. Um, so that trend is not over yet. It hasn't, the baby dragon crossing hasn't happened yet, hasn't given us that warning. Uh, but we are very close to that, very close to that indeed. All right. Um, in terms of the, uh, you know, the trend extensions, if you will, that RL10 is looking strong. The RL30 extension, which is the health of the longer term trend, is still also a solid like 45 degree angle. That's pretty good. Um, you can see the, the Dragon extension is also uh, upward pretty sharply. And, um, and the PSAR continues to move step by step up the, uh, up the ladder here. The uh, PSAR stop today was 330.90. Monday, it will be about 332, uh, which brings everything into like a nice tight cluster around. Um, you have Z1 in the bottom skin of the Dragon and the PSAR stop all right here about 332 and a half to 332. So that's going to be very strong support. That's basically also the weekly low. So uh, next week, that price has to remain above this uh, in order to preserve the gains of this powerful move uh, of the previous week. This week was really more about uh, fighting off the selling and moved up here, but and then has really just stabilized. So it was not a very large move in terms of aggregate. And net, but it, it did have quite a travel distance uh, and then finished quietly. Um, support on the way down would be low of the day, 335. Then this tight cluster at the RL90 upper skin of the dragon um, around 335.2 and 3. Spine of the dragon about 334. Belly of the dragon and Z1 and the PSAR uh, next week at 332.5. Um, Today's PSR 331-ish. Then it's, um, if that cracks, there's really nothing until you get to the 10-day low at 327. Then you have the peak RL10 from the uh, from the last surge up, stopped at 326.53, pulled back slightly, then reversed sharply for the second leg up. Um, so that's 326.50. The pullback occurred here to about 3.23. Um, we'd have to pass through the Bollinger Band main at 3.25 to get there. So that's really, you know, the, if this is the first leg in the in defense, that's the second leg right here at 3.25.50, 30. Then it's the peak RL270 long-term fair value at 3.21.50, which is where, um, peak fair value had achieved prior to the COVID sell-off altogether. So we're well past that. So this is a, this is an optimistic market. It is, um, I think it has digested the fact that Kamala Harris and Biden will be every bit in the corporate overlords pockets as much as the Trump administration. So there'll be, uh, uh, no going back on that. And plus that money from the Treasury has already been deployed and committed. So I think that's being viewed as a safe pick and reduced a lot of risk for the markets. Doesn't seem to matter much that the economy and the poor folks have not been taken care of with health care in a pandemic or guaranteed of keeping their homes um, or guaranteed income or guaranteed jobs or an effort to rebuild the economy. Uh, that's all work that needs to be done. Uh, maybe someday we'll elect people that will do that work. In the meantime, uh, the market has stabilized up in here and it is now looking more towards sectors and individual companies to begin to separate uh, now that the market feels comfortable. When the market feels comfortable, I get a little uncomfortable with this declining volatility, so we'll be ready for that. Um, but I am prepared now to be holding the swing trades in both directions. Um, 
in the normal way up until this point. I And to this week, I have not uh, been of that mindset. I'm continuing to keep my core position, which is about 20% of the portfolio, which is the long-term buy and hold and forget about forever. That is still in uh, cash, treasuries, and corporate bonds um, pending the election outcome. Um, but I am, and I've been full-time day trading and only maybe a third to a quarter speed swing trading. I'm now back to normal swing trading with that intermediate bucket of money. So that's um, that's a look at, at the uh, posture. Um, today's trade, there was just not much going on. It was really low volume and low volatility. So let's just take a look at what happened. So the um, the S and P was exactly flat for the day at zero. The diamonds were a little better at 0.14. The Russell was a little worse at minus 0.06. So not much movement at all um, in the in the index. So let's take a look at the at the upside. What was better in the blue? We'll take a look at the sectors and and countries. So the S and P at zero. Basic materials up a fraction at 0.11, finance at 0.4, um, energy at 0.95, Mexico, a good trade today, 1.58, um, oil exploration, uh, 2.28. I count Simon Property Group as the commercial real estate at 3.2. Um, in terms of the downside, the sectors, so the S&P again at zero, uh, consumer discretionary basically flat at minus uh, 0 0.01, tech 0 0.07, minus 0 0.07, uh, healthcare, I'm a, let's look at all the techs, XLK 0 0.07, TECL, which is the triple leverage tech sector is minus 0 0.2, and the triple Qs, um, which is the NASDAQ 100 tech, which is constructed just a little bit differently than the broad tech sector because it's cap weighted, uh, was minus 0 0.3. Um, the other sectors that lag healthcare minus 0 0.2, uh, treasuries minus 0 0.4, uh, wheat and precious metals, which is my composite of uh, precious metals, minus 0 0.5, uh, clean energy minus 1.14. I think it's on sale. Um, silver minus three. Um, now looking at the individual companies that made a difference today, working up the stack. There again, there's the S&P at zero. Microsoft 0.1, Coke 0.14, IBM and Twitter up about 0.2, Walmart and Intel around 0.6 and some change. Uh, Nvidia and Alcoa 1.1, Nucor and Tesla and US Steel in the 1.6 to 1.9 range. Uh, and then the big winners for today, Cliff Natural Resources, Devon Energy, and Commercial Real Estate, 2.3, 2.3, and 3.2. So, again, uh, it was more about the individual companies than the sectors today, but uh, promising from Cliff and Devon. And I also like uh, U.S. Steel and Nucor being much better than XLB. So that was, there was some buying pressure on those going into the weekend, and I think they're still on sale. Um, working down the stack, uh, Nikola and Facebook and Japan basically flat. Uh, Apple, Brazil, emerging markets about minus 0.1 to minus 0.2. Oil, minus 0.2. Home Depot gave back a fraction for the first time in recorded memory, minus 0.4. Amazon, Cat, and Cisco down about 0.4 to 0.5. Uh, Google, minus 0.7. Virgin Space, Virgin Galactic, minus 1.1. Win, minus 2. Um, and the Kodak, minus 8. Now at 8.4. Uh, $8.43. Just what a smashing. There's uh, And there's no daily volatility on it left, so it's probably back to what we might consider as 
uh, intrinsic value down from a high of 60 just two weeks ago. Thank you for the living reminder of the herd mentality. Um, thanks to Robin Hood, Robin Hood traders. You know, they rob from the, they lend from the rich to the poor and then rob for the poor to give it back with interest to the rich. That's, that's the modern treatment of Robin Hood. So really not much to not much to pick from uh, today there was some little there was a little bit of trading and uh, available here in in cliff devon and u.s steel um, and uh, and mexico so um this is mexico uh, i'm really liking this this move here it came out of the um trading range that we had identified earlier this week this uh, this trading block and it came out of that on Tuesday and held and today voted sharply upward and uh, and that feels um, halfway to the previous peak so Mexico still feels pretty good uh, whereas Brazil has come all the way back into this box where we where we traded the way up. <clears throat> now you can see the power of the dragon that when it breaches the dragon and rolls over, exits up in this region, protect you against the sell-offs. Now it's right back where it started. And that's the essence of swing trading there is you find these critical states. Um, and then when the opportunity is there, you strike. And then as it that opportunity dissipates, you cash. And now it's right back into that same uh, that's tight trading range here uh, as nothing else had happened. So the fact that it held support at 30, I uh, consider that to be a good thing. And we could just put, notice how symmetrical all this stuff is. Knowing what your standard ranges are um, really do matter for these symbols that if you trade them a lot, So that's what that's going to look like. And then if it can get above 33.30, um, then it looks like this. So it's got to, it still has to get above that uh, hump of the RL10, but that's what that trade looks like. So Brazil setting up nicely. Um, Devon Energy was the other one that did really well today. So that found support at the PSAR dot and gave a nice intraday trade. With a strong finish. Um, but there were a couple moments. Where that trade was available. Um, after this, after each of these sharp sell-offs, there's a supported spring crossing available, sharp sell-off, supported spring crossing, sharp sell-off, supported spring crossing. So knowing where you are in that Z3 envelope and knowing and going from a peak to a valley with rising lows makes this such an amazing entry. This technique of trade from band to band or from z minus two to z plus two um, you can make a living from z2 to z2 um, as an example here's a z2 excursion down to z2 back up to a z2 all the way down to z2 back up this case to z3 and um, you know those are 
those are tradable moves in Devon Energy. It has such a low share price. And now, as you can see, the, the little dragon horns past Z2, sharp revert. And so anytime you see these excursions that are not followed through by support, watch what happens right after that, crushing it all the way back down to Z1. What happens here? Failure to continue, crushing it all the way back to Z minus 1. Z3 excursion, all the way back to Z minus 1. Two dragon horns in reversal, crush all the way down here. Doesn't fail further. Supported spring crossing. Uh, trading within this adaptive Bollinger Band River, um, it's hydraulic. And notice that the longer term trend indicators are telling, hey, the VWAP keeps rising. So they're buying it on volume. And the long term fair value of the RL270 continues to point the way higher. Notice it's starting to stall here, and that's the effect of this big rollover. So you get paid to know the difference between normal and abnormal. Here's a one, two, three entry. Here's a supported spring crossing. So that pattern is fractal, and uh, you don't have to get all of that. You just need some of it. And now the afternoon trade gives you that same um, that same supported spring here. Uh, I would concur with you that if you got this one, that this would get you out. But if that gets you out, then this must get you back in. And now you have this series of higher lows, higher lows, higher lows, higher lows. And uh, you can make a living on that as long as you don't overbelieve in the position and can act while things are still uncertain to preserve capital, to protect against risk, and to protect yourself against your own belief in what's going to happen. No, you're just trading what might happen. Here was a strong argument for the Z1 exit, vice the the Bollinger Band mean exit. Uh, Cliff Natural Resources gave us the same kind of pattern today. So this big fat yellow zone blob and, and the orange blob is if we went back and looked at the daily. Uh, we would see it had compressed to a um, tight range, and then the yellow zone would have triggered the breakout reaction. And now TC2000 is not cooperating. Come on. That's a sign that I should get back to the daily, so let me reset this. Let's go ahead and move to the daily report and the weekend report. Uh, again, so uh, tomorrow morning from 10 on, we'll do the Q&A session. Um, Sunday night's podcast, the 8 o'clock podcast will be to review trade frames that you guys have posted in Campfire to take a look at the um, uh the weekly trading plan ahead. So uh, this will be the reading of the report looking for uh, strategies. Okay.
Oh, so now it wants to play. Okay. I actually did want to make this point before we left. So this was uh, this was the trade frame setup that we had yesterday. Um, let me compress that a little bit. So uh, when we looked at Thursday, we put that that uh, bracketing box on. We said so any price that took out yesterday's high, we would be interested in like uh, of getting long. Um, so in this case, we would be. At a, you know, we'd be looking to get long here or short if it had fallen out this way. So when we put that orange dot on there, that's my my shorthand for uh, being ready to take that in either direction. So now when we zoom into the day, that price level at the top of the yellow box, you know, looks like this. So when it took out that uh, that box, we would be justified in, in having entries about in this area. At green. And then if we were doing mechanical swing trading, you know, one day at a time, uh, our stop um, would be down here. And you can see that was uh, never close to being hit. And then that gives us the opportunity to, uh, you know, to watch the watch the VWAP providing support all the way up. And now I'm noticing that all the price action is above the VWAP, so that's really positive. And what that suggests is um, that a return to this VWAP level. There was a lot of people comfortable owning that around 620, and there was buying pressure that took that all the way up to 630. So that, as a swing trade, is something that I'm willing to hold this position for. So when I'm playing core and turbo, I use the daily trade frame to decide when, when on a swing trade basis, did we get evidence that this is worth owning? So when it breaks out of that yellow box at, uh, above six. So now I can play this with intraday size, make some money on it, and then keep anywhere from a fifth to a tenth of that position as a swing trade to play for this to 620 um, using markets money from the day trade. Right? So that's the purpose of that yellow box uh, and the mechanical trade framing. So now when we zoom in on that, Now what you can see is the uh, uh, this was that's the boundary between yesterday's close and today's open, and so now let me shrink this down so you can see it a little easier. So now when we're watching that opening price action, this is how it closed and then it gapped open, sold off sharply, came back inside the inside the Z3 envelope, stabilizes. There's there's the, the value of that RL10 now to smooth out that price. Now you can see that the RL10 has remained above the VWAP the whole way, all day. So now when the RL10, which is my trader's price. That's the low. Now you see a higher low and it's turned to spring. Now we have a supported spring crossing. We can treat that as the harsh winter. We can see the reversal above the baby dragon. Spring or Winter turns to spring. The PSAR flips. So we're entitled to put an entry here on a tactical basis, knowing that because we know where the upper limit of yesterday was. Any, if that price were to break out of this, then we now have uh, some favorable indications. 
Now, if this uh, if this gets you out, and it should, um, you should be thinking of two exits here. Um, you should be thinking about this one as a sniper. Um, and I wouldn't be offended. Uh, if this had gotten you out, um, then if you're playing tactically, you get a re-entry there. And then you might have played a, uh, a second position there when it breaks out above that yellow box. And in that case, because you got two positions on pretty quickly, you probably take a sniper and then a managerial exit, or you just say, hey, I'm going to take all of it right there because it's so early in the day. Then you have this trade, and that one ends up grinding uh, northward for most of the day. So you end up getting uh, a tradable opportunity. It, it might take one or two shots to get going. Like this one probably... This one probably gets you out. This one gets you back in, and then that one pays off. Uh, as does that one. So one of the things that I'm trying to show on here is that relationship between core and turbo. You have very... Um, clear guidance on what to do inside when you're in the yellow zone what you're trying what you're trying to do so when you're in this yellow zone you're playing just tactically to the you know support and resistance uh, and you're going to be and you're going to wait to see what kind of price action happens around here because this is as high as it got yesterday and then it sold off. So when you're long inside here and it's coming up to where yesterday's resistance was, you got to be mindful that that thing uh, can snap back at you sharply. And that's why a tight risk control here is probably indicated. But then when you see this move up and then find support where yesterday that was resistance, today that is support, that's another indication. Uh, of this kind of possible move. So here's leg one and there's leg two. So um, if you think about this like rising and falling tides, thinking about it hydraulically, you can, um, you're playing percentages and statistics as opposed to beliefs and forecasting. You're playing strictly based on um, hydraulics and the feelings of pressure. Okay, that's what I wanted to say. Okay, now back to the uh, to the weekend report. Thank you for your indulgence. Hopefully you found that helpful. Um, if that was helpful to you, um, let, give me a shout out there in the in the comments or in the in the questions box. So, so I can see if it if it feels like it's working for you. Okay. Okay, so for the weekend report, we've got a uh, still bullish normal and a strongly overbought market. Um, and even in the last, you know, three days, we're still, the three-day NDX at 77 is still above average, so that's good. Um, eight percentage points above the sideways market uh, indicator. The ADX is a fraction away from becoming strong at 25. So the 24.8, we basically... For all intents and purposes, can say this is a strongly trending bullish move. Um, the ATR is now down just a fraction above one. And remember, three weeks ago, that was a two and a half. 
Um, the risk index and the risk Z are still pointing the way higher, um, but not irrationally so. So this is really the position for a second leg up. Um, in the long-term blended monthly rebalancing, uh, we're holding, depending on your which portfolio you're using, it's a strong U.S. large caps and tech, and uh, clean energy has been doing very well, that PBW. These are the current leaders uh, for each of those um, different uh, portfolios, and even an ETF, even with the pullback recently in Wheaton, um, it's still one of the leading candidates for, for owning, so that's all positive. So all U.S., all the time, mostly tech. Uh, and then using the same lens to look at the individual components of the Dow, Apple, Caterpillar, Home Depot, you'd be very happy uh, owning and holding those things for the long term. Uh, ETF2 theoretical exposure still at 10%, or 100%, excuse me. Um, monthly market health checks were halfway through April. That's nothing but an unqualified success. We are at the previous Z3 excursion. And that, to me, just, again, I would not have predicted that, but um, that feels very vulnerable all the way down to the Bollinger Band mean. That's all, that's all I can see. So I'm content to keep my core um, positions protected right now until till we get out here into uh, November. So that's the vulnerability that I see. The upside, it's hard to see what, what does it look like this or that that's a big question mark to me. Um, what is the argument for continued runaway moves to the upside? There aren't any. And so um, as I look at this, you know, the, the best I could see is if you, if that looks like the increment of change month over month. So just take a look at the, size of the monthly move. So there's this one, you know, it was huge. Then there's this one. So the irrational exuberance each month, those monthly ranges are steadily compressing. And there's this one, I missed that. So as you can see, the, um, the monthly volatility uh, is just shrinking the further up the stack we go. So that what that tells you is the importance of the insight of um, knowing the difference between normal and abnormal. That after an abnormal move, and it starts to reverse that that first wave of volatility back is the biggest and then the next biggest and then the next biggest. it keeps getting smaller and smaller and then uh when it gets to that peak performance like right here then there was another that's the the big sell off that i'm concerned about right there so if we bring this move over to here now that is uh that comes back to um, to this price level at like 310. So that would be the magnitude uh, of a normal sized profit preservation move against this unbelievable six month move. So 310. Um, and that's why to me, um, the monthly low, let's call that 328 is important. 
The previous PSAR at about 320 feels important. Those are price levels, I think, that matter. And that's the, uh, you know, the last time that we had that big, that big run up, this was the size of that first monthly sell off. And then that's the one that triggered the huge sell off, which was this one. So now if we take a look at the, uh, if we say the, the size of the first monthly, whoops. This mouse is very sensitive. So now if we take the size of this move, And we hang it from the from that high. You can see now that having um, picking one of these three um, intermediate exits gives us some protection. You know, so now I can think. I'm looking at this up here. If I have, if I'm worried about this kind of a normal retracement to three. 310, you know, uh, a $10 stop here is about 3%, 6%, 9%. And that protects against a 20% sell off all the way back to 280, which would also be essentially the, uh, you know, the Bollinger Band mean. And then just notice how this tracks pretty nicely to like the, um, Skin of the Dragon at 320, Spine of the Dragon at 310, then there's probably a Belly of the Dragon at 300. So for your longer term positions, um, in terms of risk management, you got to decide how much of that you're willing to give back. Which one do you see as the, you know, the actual risk? Is it this first one? This is a 10% sell-off or is it a 20% sell-off you're trying to protect against? If you're trying to protect against a 10%, you might have 3% so that you risk 3 in order to protect against a loss of 10 if you're trying to protect against a 20%, you might you might take the 320 and say, I'm willing to give back six in order to protect against a loss of 20. So it depends how much of this, the moves of the last six weeks or eight weeks you wanna declare as yours. You know, for me, the excess gains are everything north of the skin of the dragon. So uh, I, like, I like the 330, I don't wanna give back more than 3% because I really couldn't believe that that was happening anyway. So I don't want to give, I don't want to invest more confidence in it than I had going in. I guess that's what I want to say. So keep those price levels in mind then. Um, 330, 320, 310, sort of as a nice round numbers. Um, and then the move we're really worried about uh, down to 280. That's what the that collapse looked like in here. That first twenty percent, ouch. Um, looking now at the uh, at the weekly, we can zoom in a little little uh, sharper here. So let's, so we said we, we were looking at 320, 310 from the, uh, this was from that monthly, 300, 280 was the, um, that, um, the big one we were concerned about, that 20% move. And now this weekly low here at like 330, now takes on a 
different perspective when you when you zoom in a little further. I, I treat I would treat this as a block sell off and recovery. Nice move. Nice move. So now that this last week is kind of in a case hall by himself. Uh, so for me, uh, holding the line here at Z1, uh, that just feels like my money right there. I feel like we worked really hard uh, to get this out of the out of the cellar and fight its way all the way back up in that fight. So I'm just declaring in my mind that 330 um was professional money and this is uh unexpected gains for me and now so i'm speaking psychologically and just how i feel right now so i notice that the pr is way down here like i'm not going to use the p after after an exaggerated move like that i'm not going to let the pr tell me that i that it's okay that it would feel okay to give back that much money it wouldn't I just feel like uh, I feel like we got an opportunity now that Harris was picked um, to shoot for this. But even that, uh, that's a that's so far above the the high. I mean, what's the burning urgency? I mean, nobody can make a compelling argument to the Fed that says, "Hey, we've now that you've saved civilization and the oligarchs." You have to bring the same level of urgency to keep the party going. No, nobody's going to buy that. That's why there's reluctance right now, politically, to keep pumping more money to those guys. That's why it shifted, the conversation has shifted to what are we going to do for the plebeians, the poor? Uh, practically nothing. Saying that, hey, we're so far in debt now, uh, and that extraordinary accumulation of debt is what allowed us to get this this whole block into place. So we certainly can't spend money on the people to help them with health care and so forth. So I don't see any more help coming for the economy. This looks more like a slow grind. And that's why for me, I'm not giving back anything below 330. Um, I have sort of reset my um, my evaluation brain on that. So I will enjoy this little tactical trade going forward, but I'm not going to risk any of the money that came out of this big block um, to fight for stuff up in here. So I'm moving, I'm moving that off the table. Um, if you think about the decision we made or that I made to take off um, the core position uh, was back here when it was in this tight little, tight little cluster, above the Bollinger Band main. So I've been trading from this point forward here, um, on the basis of um, swing trading and day trading. But the purpose of that last decision was to lock in those gains in the core, which I only adjust on a monthly basis. There was no justification to wait a month to see what would happen all right so i'm uh, that's why what i'm doing now is to um psychologically i'm treating this as a fresh new game and i'm happy to see it go up in here and i will exploit this space with day trading and swing trading but not the core until we get well out here past the november election so everything that we've earned in here for me is off the table. So this is all brand new story developing. And I am concerned about these uh, support levels. And I'm willing to trade short in this dimension. So I think the, um, I think the tactical space for short side swing trading um, is in here. 
and then tactical day trading up into here. And it's already and it has already started that move up. That's what I see the um, the tactical trade space as. Okay. And we've seen the daily. All right, back to um, the relative strength uh, tables and charts. Let me know if you found that helpful. Uh, that's me narrating my way through the psychological dimensions of what I need to feel uh, professional about. Um, so I can make very clear distinctions about how much risk I'm willing to take. That's me vocalizing um, my, uh, my risk profile at age 63, father of three, um, college professor, retired army officer, and trying to describe the operational environment that I that I'm seeing. Okay. So let's take a look now uh, at the blended monthly rebalancing. So the big winners this week, uh, Japan coming out of nowhere. You can see the, this is what I find so interesting about treasuries. That has had the wildest ride of anything in the stack. So far from being the risk-free rate of return, this thing has been all over the map. It's been extraordinarily underperforming on a blended basis, a great outperformer of everything except tech over the last six months, but dramatically underperforming on the three months, one month, and one week. So that is hardly fire and forget money. Um, the rest of the world, EFA, EPP, and EWJ, while the U.S. was patiently holding its breath, I would expect these to continue to resume now that the tension is over. Looking at ETF 22, again, the, uh, the underperformers on the blended tended to be the underperformers this week and this month and this quarter that misery loves company. Notable exception, Japan and EFA Europe coming back aboard. So there may be a subtle shift. Uh, leaving the U.S. on the basis of a weakening dollar and political instability. And wait until you hear the shenanigans between now and November and Christmas about mail-in ballots. Oh, my goodness. The fear and uncertainty and doubt being introduced there could very easily drive some global investors to go take a look at um, a, they might just say, you know what, who needs that? We'll just, we'll just go to Japan and uh, Euro-Asia and just avoid the shenanigans in the U.S. political circus. Let's see if that, let's see if that's what's going on. Uh, Dow 30. 3M had a good week. Merck had a good week. Uh, Cisco and ExxonMobil got crushed. So Cisco is sort of a special one, and we framed that out. It's two days into its sell-off and held some support today. So I'm going to look at that one pretty closely this weekend. Get a chance to buy Cisco on sale on a 10% sale. Psh, why not? Got to be interested in that. Or do you think the company that makes the internet backbone devices is now suddenly not viable? I mean, don't be silly. Uh, that's a U.S. defense uh, national security in interest right there. Or do you or do you want the internet to be populated with Huawei devices? No, Cisco, much like Boeing. Will get supported. So I think this is an opportunity to buy it on sale. Home Depot just quietly crushing it in the non tech space, and then Apple clear winner in the tech space. That was available at 300. Uh, let's see. Sector spiders. 
not much else to really look at here. Consumer discretionary, oddly enough. So here's the blended performances, and they did pretty well this week. Didn't lose much in tech. Um, again, this has been a pretty reliable predictor of performance. And then the things that have been bad have been suffering. I think this is the anomaly. Uh, Treasuries, that's got a lot of people's attention right there. Is that a buying opportunity? Sure feels like it. Uh, this feels like profit-taking and some adverse momentum. Clean energy for the long term. Isn't that where the – isn't that the next dominant global solution provider? The country that solves the problem of clean energy uh, is then going to be positioned for solution provider to the world. So the U.S. won that fight in financial services and initially car production but when car production migrated then the u.s moved to financial services um now i gotta think that that's the that's the area and that's what i think tesla is postured as the combination of tesla and spacex is to dominate in this area um Interestingly, timber and a shift away from China materials. So uh, inside the U.S. market here, it's all tech all the time. Uh, Taiwan and South Korea doing well. Silver cooled off a little bit and as well advanced above gold. Um, you can see that, that tech has just been crushing everything else on every measured dimension. The U.S. is still slightly better than Euro-Asia. And inside the U.S., it's tech, small caps, mid caps, and finally large caps. Japan and Asia, less Japan were the two weakest. And tech... And emerging markets, the two strongest. That's the kind of the quiet surprise. Energy just getting smashed. And then none of the other uh, broad asset classes are even close um, to equities, with the exception of gold, which feels kind of topped out. Um, South Korea, EWY is green and white. That points, you know, green and white was good, now great. Exploit new strength. It's possible to do that with Turbo. It's a new leader. Some things that are falling off the chart, white and green, so white and green, means that it was great, now it's just good. So you want to be preserving profits. Watch for the resumption. It's easy to believe that there's another leg up, so this... These are things that could come back, like tech and uh, consumer discretionary. But the bloom is off that rose. And then these in the green are both very liquid and also well-suited for shorter-term trading because of the volatility. So silver is just off the chart. Uh, gold miners, energy, Brazil biotech, and then the um, oil and gas exploration, very liquid, very volatile, great for trading, okay? Uh, shifting to the daily report. I covered this last night, but it was worth keeping those in there. Again, this is just the magnitude of the uh, the federal deficit and the amount of debt that we have printed um, in the first 10 months. Just 
unsustainable, just unbelievable. The last time it was even close to that was um, this debt and uh, debt accumulation from 2008 and nine, the housing crisis, and then makes that look like chump change. And I think we've seen, let's see, we've seen pieces of this one. Yeah, so bullish and overbought. Uh, McDonald's, United Health, Walmart, Coke, and Procter. Notice that none of the min pains are tech companies. The max pains include Cisco, ExxonMobil, Boeing, Walgreens. There's Devon and Cisco, like in that. So many dojis today because of that lack of directionality. Um, lots of good auto framers available. There's a 551W and an auto framer in Exxon Mobil. So if energy continues to quietly get better, Exxon Mobil is a candidate for buying quality on sale. In the, in the ETFs, again, the uh, uh, plenty of dojis. Uh, treasuries are firing on channeling over reaction. It's 7.4 to 1 on the auto framer. I'm just dramatically interested in that. Like everything looks great going into a quiet Friday over the weekend. And if that reverses next week, treasuries are going to come roaring back. And that will make that an amazing uh, swing trade. Today it was energy. Mexico and oil exploration. And finally, silver gave back something. Apple stands out to me. The inverse of, you know, uh, those five right there are all very tradable and postured relatively low in their, uh, in their performance stack. So I kind of like them as a value player. I like that Merck and Apple are pinching. Lots to choose from here in the auto framer. Uh, lots of good reward to risk ratios. The my risk is um, what this table chooses um, in order to compute the reward to risk ratio. It's basically it was, in every case, it was using range risk, which was high minus low plus a five cent buffer on either side. And then it compares that to um, the reward money of a, it uses the 10 day high as the target, computes the amount of dollars between the high of the day and the 10 day high, computes the rain, the, uh, you know, the, the risk dollars, uses that to give you the reward to risk ratio. Okay. And then this gives you the mechanical entry and what the computed initial stop would be. Okay. Um, the top shelf, these are the ones that are the most ATRs below their own RL270. So this is your value plays in here. Cisco, Microsoft, Intel really stand out for me. Um, in the red are the ones that are the most ATRs above their own RL270, so that feels like they're overheating. Home Depot and McDonald's. Even Boeing and Disney have made nice recovery runs. Um, lots to choose from on the daily squeeze. Because of the relatively low range of today, you're going to get a lot of um, one-day pops like these are the ones that have all compressed a lot. So there's Microsoft and SPY, better than three to one. Um, there's Walmart, Disney, and discretionary. Uh, Intel, tech, and emerging markets. I like that. There's some globals there, EFA and Asia less Japan. Home Depot and McDonald's. Man, get on those. Big distinction between winners and losers um, in the four seasons of MACD. 
These are the ones making their turnarounds in the spring and the ones that just joined them in the summer and moving their way up the stack. Um, then when they're green on their Z-score, these are the ones that are fully engaged in making big wins. So depending where in that movement cycle you want to get, get your entries, you can use that as sort of a guide. Big winners, a surprising loser there in, um, in Visa. But uh, Cisco setting up nicely as a value play. I'm still liking ExxonMobil and IBM. They didn't do much today, but I like them for that reason. You're up a surprising give back. Those feel like opportunities. And then Mexico really has turned it around, starting to make that move. So when you see this kind of anomaly, like underperforming, but then overperforming, that's a reversal of fortunes. And so that's the kind of thing that attracts omnivores, like the coyote, the master opportunist. And it chased a couple of them little rascals out of my trash the other night. So walking the dogs late, and what do I see? A couple of them little sneaky guys. Got to watch them. Steal your little dogs. Uh, a grinding market upward right there. Well within normal ranges of, uh, of slope for a typical grinding upward market. I just feel like this is pushing in terms of percent stretch, the market is no longer in recession. And so now where do we go from here? Is it a retracement or is it a continuation? Surprisingly quiet, lack of volatility in here. Man, oh man, oh man. So quietly grinding is a recipe for more success. The RL90 uh, was overheated in this period, is cooling off a little bit. RL30 is not exaggerated. So that's sort of a, that's what a grinding upward market feels like. Finding support at the edge of the river, as long as it's above that Z1, that's um, quietly confident. And that it's from those conditions we might see something like that. What we don't want to see is that. Hmm. Yeah, so this feels more like up. And uh, that's everything I want to cover from this weekend report. Plenty of opportunities, some time to do some reflection about the uh, buckets of money in your risk profile and coming up with your strategy as we start coming into the silly season for politics. Um. That's unworthy of me, but uh, yeah, pull it off. All right, so that's the um, session link for tomorrow, and it's available on Patreon. That's everything that I got, guys, and we will see you in the morning and again Sunday night. Take good care.